I don't own a large white chair, um, and neither do any of my friends. So I'm just gonna plop that down and see if that looks good. It looks fine when it's close to the camera, but I think once it's on the couch and I'm on the couch too, uh, it doesn't really look that similar. I'm also pretty sure that in very many ways, YouTube community guidelines prevents me from smoking in the first 30 seconds of the video. I also don't smoke cigarettes, so that's, uh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. We all know the celebrities go on daytime television, late night television, and now podcasts to seem more likable, more endearing, more like normal people. That's part of why that media ecosystem exists, to get people to like celebrities and to get celebrities to promote their projects so that people want to see those projects because they have celebrities that they like in it. World goes round. That makes it sound like I'm upset with this existing. I'm not. I love late night TV. I love watching clips of Drew Barrymore. She's so funny. There are probably too many podcasts that I listen to. I think there's a lot of good stuff happening in that space. Oh, we didn't talk about Z-Way? Come on now. And I like that now as I'm getting older, there are comedians and producers who are making shows more tailored to my comedic sensibilities. It's great. But we're not talking about that today. We're not talking about something that I like a lot. Cause why would I do that? We're gonna talk about something that I thought was bad. And that's Cole Sprouse on Call Her Daddy. Cole Sprouse. Yes. Welcome to Call Her Daddy. Thank you for having me. For those of you who are unaware, Call Her Daddy is a podcast that used to be hosted by two people on one podcast network and now is hosted by one person exclusively on Spotify. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> $60 million podcast deal with Spotify. God damn. It seems like the podcast ended over contract stuff and it tore their friendship apart with it. You know how these things go. It's a podcast about sex and relationships and with only the one host, either Alex will have a guest on who she will interview about their experience with those sort of things, or if it's just her, she'll do a deeper dive into a certain section of that topic, like dating apps or something like that. Cole Sprouse is a former Disney Channel child star known best for being Dylan Sprouse's twin. Um, that's a little mean joke right there. The two of them started in a show called The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. As they got into their teen years, it was spun off into Sweet Life on Deck. Then they went to college, took a break from acting, and now Cole is in Riverdale, the highly popular and that's the adjective i'll use to describe the show uh cw series <laughs> what is up daddy gang i know this isn't really part of the episode nor does it have shit to do with the words that cole sprouse is about to say but calling your audience the daddy gang very funny to me it feels very of its time one thing you'll pick up on pretty quickly in this interview is that cole sprouse who is dressed like the coolest 24 year old at a high school party. He looks like the first guy cut from an audition for West Side Story. This is how a film bro who's a little too into La La Land and doesn't reciprocate oral dresses for a formal occasion. Sorry. One thing that you'll pick up on in this interview is that he thinks he's very smart. Whether it's his use of the word macabre. Some macabre, you know, uh, Lovecraftian text mm -hmm. that I try to decipher. His malapropisms. This is a gold rush, man. You gotta, you gotta strike this vein while it's hot. Yeah. You know how ores are always hot. That's why you put them in a furnace so they feel more at home. His turns of phrase that he seems too pleased to have come up with. People join in on the feast for crows, as this, as this sort of cacophony of criticism and they don't um ever hold themselves accountable for their own behavior mm -hmm. and the show riverdale took off overnight and 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 reintroduced me this to this buffet of decadency that that i had or the sentences that have a lot of big words that don't really mean a whole lot and many in that case take to uh, public sexual display take to drug use take to these means of investing the conversation of their life, a level of adulthood mm -hmm. that uh, they are not being afforded by the public. You can just talk like a normal person. That's okay too. It was the, I think it was the consequence of some weird alchemy of, of addiction and mental instability. He oozes guy who tried shrooms for the first time and has now discovered empathy and needs everyone to know energy. Like this sentence. I think in very many ways, we are all more or less durable to the trappings of 
success and everyone has their own personal navigation through that stuff which just seems like the most self-aggrandizing way of saying even positive life changes change you which of course they do that's what changes do he also smokes four cigarettes over the course of an hour-long podcast do you mind if i have a cigarette please have your cigarette no i'm <laughs> fucking chill <laughs> like i'm great i'm great <laughs> Um, that probably most of my relationships were, uh, had a stronger sexual, um, foundation than an emotional foundation. Coming Thank on. you for letting me fill this studio with four cigarettes. As someone who lives in New York, I, I'm not going to judge you for smoking a cigarette. I don't do it myself, but I enjoy what other people do around me. So what does that say about who I am as a person? But smoking anything during a podcast is a little silly. If you're on camera and you need something to put in your mouth, besides your own foot, of course, the only things I wanna see are a comically large lollipop they are just peeking out of every time you lick it, or a pipe that you're smoking like Sherlock Holmes, just going. But smoking a cig and making little figure eights in the ashtray just makes it seem like you're trying so hard to be cool. I wish that their smoke alarm would've gone off at any point during the interview. That would've been so fucking funny artists now i mean now we're, we're holding them to a very um very high standard just publicly but most of us only join the arts because we're pretty fucked up cole sprouse began acting in 1993 he began being a human on earth in 1992 you joined the arts because your parents wanted you to that's the you were a baby a baby cannot choose a baby cannot do it. A baby cannot even walk. Dylan started as the bully in elementary school. Everyone loves the bully. Contrary to popular belief. Yeah, girls love the bully, at least in, in high school. I guess if he's like a harmless bully. I don't know. Dylan was this has got to be the most stereotypical dude brain moment. You're on a podcast hosted by a woman where she talks about sex and dating and regularly gives the woman perspective on those things. And you tell her what women want. Because you know better than she does. She's a woman after all. Then he talks about his mom for a little bit. So are you not, don't have a relationship with your mom? Not at all. I mean, in truth, she lost her mind. It's probably the greatest wound in my life. And also the greatest driving force for my continuing in this industry. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. But um, I miss her. I miss her a lot. She was an incredibly beautiful and artistic woman. Uh, every once in a while, she'll reach out to me some weird hieroglyphic text. Those are called emojis, Cole. They are all the rage. I think they're gonna stick around. This next bit is not his fault. I tried for very many years. I tried all the things that people said I should try and the things that I felt would be best to try and get her out of her station or whatever it was, but you know what? You can take a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, man. But that hard cut to black and the epic music, trying to make it sound like he said a hard closing line, when he said a pretty innocuous idiom. I didn't even mean to alliterate there. He's getting in my head. So when I stumbled on that dragon sitting on a pile of gold, I didn't think twice about it. You know what they say. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. The best part about making a video about an interview is a lot of the times the context for something that Cole says is just Alex asking him a question. So when I'm editing this, I can just put Alex asking him a question and then Cole give the response, and then you have all the context you need. Here's the next question. I feel like at some point, everyone experiences some type of mental health oh, yeah. setback. or Not me, man. What's something that you've worked through? Oh, I mean, public criticism, for sure. Mm. It's big. Well, I didn't criticize him until after it was a known issue. So I'm I'm good, right? Most artists I know hear the criticism. Almost all of them do, myself included. And, and most of our natures will go, oh man, look at all these nice comments. This is wonderful, but we fucking will go to that mm -hmm. one. It doesn't matter what it is. You know what? I agree with that. Especially when the comments are directly below me and are one of the first things I see when I open YouTube studio. But I think as a creative person, especially when you start getting paid to do it, you understand when a job is a job. You try to find some way to get into it and you try and put your best foot forward 
do good work, and maybe even you'll find some creative fulfillment from it. But we've all done things that we know are not high art. And then I, I put up the poster for Riverdale, or I show a clip from the show or something like that. I dropped out in the fourth grade to run drugs to support my nano. That means you haven't known the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of high school football. I should say, I have not seen a full episode of the show Riverdale. I've seen clips online. Some of them even have coal in them. And from what I've seen, it feels like most of the criticism of that show is pretty fair and warranted. This actually makes me nervous. It's so cringy. You could have put this clip before anything he said at all on this entire podcast and it still would have worked. Have you ever been cheated on? Yeah, by almost every single one of my girlfriends. Oh, man, that... That sucks. That that sucks. I'm really sorry. Uh, hold on. Emotionally, yes. Wow. Very, very much. And my first girlfriend, uh, physically, yeah. Oh. Um, so that that is a different answer than the one that you jumped out with. And I don't blame, I literally don't blame any of my partners for anything that has happened. Ever. Got it. I wish Alex would have asked a follow-up about what he means by emotional cheating because that's a line that's going to be different for everybody. I don't think exact details are needed, nor should they be expected. But I think it's an interesting thing that's going to vary from person to person. Is it flirting with a stranger? Is it confiding emotionally in someone who is not your partner? Is it a third thing? <laughs> I don't know. I have answers for me, but those are my personal answers based off of my own life experience. I think that could be an interesting conversation about where that line is for Cole. Instead of following it up that way, she follows it up in the most call her daddy way possible by blaming him for getting emotionally cheated on. Yeah, I was going to say not to put it all on you, Cole, but like if there's that theme of emotional cheating, I'm wondering if you've oh, been able yeah. to find within yourself. Like, oh, totally. Were you not giving? Totally, totally. Open I, I mean, if he's not going to blame the women and it does have to be somebody's fault. Sorry, Cole. And here's where I have to mention that Cole has been accused of being the opposite of everything he says here. There's evidence that he is in fact the cheater, that he is the one who emotionally puts his partner through the ringer. It's not a case of fundamental incompatibility, like he says, but he's being the issue. There've been weird tweets where he sort of hand waves some abuse away. It's odd. Anyone that points the finger at another person and blames the entirety of, of some sort of uh, miscommunication on them is probably not doing the self work. And as we come to the close of the podcast, he starts talking about his relationship with Lily Reinhardt. She's his co-star on Riverdale. She plays Betty on the show. They dated in real life, and their characters were also romantically intimate in the show itself. But Cole, Cole says a lot here about their relationship, way more than is appropriate for someone who you are still working with. That's right, the show is still filming. He's going to have to go to set and see everybody after after having said everything he did here on the podcast. You had a relationship with a castmate on Riverdale. Mm -hmm. How did you navigate a breakup with someone that you work with? Ooh, it was really hard. It's really hard for both of us. And that's okay. We started off okay. <laughs> so that's something. I know we both did quite a quite a bit of damage to each other. We were in a foreign city working a very intense schedule 14 hours a day is oftentimes six days a week we really leaned on each other while also going through the elected trauma of this incredible overnight success and there he goes i think he just thinks that acting in and of itself is a traumatic thing to do to which i'd say cole you don't have to do it you can stop being an actor in very many ways uh, all the cliches about dating someone you work with are very true. Do you think it lasted longer because you were working together? Absolutely. If I had loved myself a little more, I probably, I probably would have left a little earlier. Why did the relationship end? I won't go into that too much, but I will say it was mutual. Can I tell you something? Please. I promised myself today that if you fucking said the word mutual, I was going to call you out. Yeah. Someone had to have made the first step to end it. I left. But to be honest, when you're in a relationship for that long and someone leaves, it's not like someone's like, what? It just all feels so gross. 
especially the way that he's holding that cigarette so confidently i think in very many ways this was right before covid so so many ways number one it was before march of 2020 number two see previous see previous is my favorite robot from star wars and then yesterday cole was on another podcast the diary of a ceo talking about largely the same things i think there's two types of kids within you know the child acting business there's like the thespian children that choose to do it and then there's the working class kids there were kind of two kinds of kids uh working kids really there was the kids that were doing it to put food on the table for mommy and daddy and then like the thespian children you know like like mommy i want to go into acting so i'm just you know a guy sitting in a buka wool chair with some mommy issues and i won't go too much into that because i don't want to make this whole podcast about another young man in la with mommy issues you can take a horse to water but you can't make a drink man i can watch my father go hey man you you need to drink water at this watering hole but i you know you can't drag me there and make me drink and this nepo baby argument as an example oh, has yeah. been in my and in, in in my opinion something my brother and I have been talking about since we were kids, but it's now just recently become a hot topic in, in the public. You know, this Nepo baby conversation has been huge out here in LA. I don't know how, how big it's been out in the UK, but most of us forget that uh, your 20s are pretty much almost primarily all mistakes. Yep. Not mistakes because uh, that, that, you know, there's, it shouldn't feel regretful, but it, it's definitely a learning process. Petri dish. I truly believe that your 20s are meant to be a petri dish for mistake that you're supposed to learn lessons from. And anytime someone goes on a podcast media tour like this, I get nervous because this is what Andrew Tate did. This is what skyrocketed his career. And like Mr. Beast did the same thing. And when Mr. Beast did it, he even said he was following the Tate model. So basically like with, um, like I, I would call it like the Andrew Tate model. Like he just went on a bunch of podcasts and the clips just went super viral on TikTok. And like the more you do, kind of just clicked in my head like two weeks ago. Like if you just go on a bunch of podcasts, people just post them on TikTok. Yeah. And you'll just get tons of views for no effort. Putting aside, it is it is weird. It is bizarre to go, oh, Andrew Tate, that's what I want to do. That's who I want to replicate the success of. Even before he was arrested like a goddamn bozo. To want to replicate Andrew T it's weird. But it seems like that's what, what Cole's maybe doing. He did say that in his relationship with Lily, he felt he had to be a nurse. I was a people pleaser. I, I was a people pleaser professionally. I was a people pleaser uh, romantically. I was practically a fucking nurse to whoever needed my help in very many ways. I'm like a nurse. Calling yourself the nurse in a relationship when your partner had mental health struggles, definitely not a great look, especially in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm trying not to read into it too much. It's also just weird to go on multiple different podcasts and talk specifically about your relationships with specific people. If you spoke broadly about the past and specifically about the present, I think people would take a lot less issue with it. It's definitely different talking about things that didn't work out, especially with someone who's as prominent a figure as Lily Reinhardt is. And it's it's about finding the line of like your own lived experience, which he, he did live through that relationship with Lily Reinhardt. I don't think anyone's gonna take that away from him. But your own lived experience versus not stealing away somebody else's so by doing multiple podcasts like this he gets to be the one to shape the narrative and whatever she says about it if she does say anything in the future is gonna be having to immediately start counter and all that stuff start counter let me say that better let me say those words in a more meaningful impactful way for you the viewer by going on multiple podcasts cole gets to choose the initial way that people hear about their relationship i'm not saying that cole lied on either of these podcasts but i i think it's important if you're learning about someone's own history to know the historian lily might feel differently about how the relationship ended but now anything that she has to say about it goes up against the the canon that he's created. Going on one podcast and talking about a specific ex-girlfriend of yours is a dumb, kind of mean, weird thing to do, especially when you're still working together and all that. But doing it on multiple different shows, it just like adds another level of 
malevolent to it. See, but when I use big words, it's in like a intellectual stimulating kind of way and not in the dumb, I'm trying to sound very smart way that he's doing it. I'm not trying to sound very smart. I just answered. <laughs> I also hate the titles and thumbnails that the Diary of a CEO uses. Mom sacrificed my childhood for fame. They wanted to kill my family. I can predict when you'll die. This is all just the consequences of living in a world where Darman was successful. That's the whole reason those thumbnails look like that. The first podcast was was bad enough. And then the second one really just gave me an uncomfortable feeling. I'm going to hold the microphone here so I can just say this to camera. He said he hates pretentiousness. If I can sense a, a kind of pretentiousness or condescension, that's usually something that will either take me to leave the room or confront another person about it and be like, hey, why'd you, why'd you do that? Has he seen Cole Sprouse on these podcasts? He used logos in a sentence, like ethos, pathos, logos. I, I try to approach everything with a kind of logos that, that you know, allows me to think more clearly and calmly about what I do, um, which can be off-putting to some people uh, because not a lot of people like being met uh, with logos. A thing you learn about in high school English class. In very many ways, 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 but in very many ways, in very many ways, in very many ways, I was able to go through it with someone who was going through the exact same set of circumstances as me. But also, in very many ways, 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 in very many ways in very many ways in very many ways thanks so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it if you did and you wouldn't mind leaving a like or subscribing i'd really appreciate that i had this whole ending where i was going to be like oh it's call her daddy which used to be just internalized misogyny and heteronormativity and now it's just kind of flaccid and uninspired but then he went on another podcast and i had to really change gears so thanks a lot, Cole. You, this is the, I'm the real victim here. Again, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I guess I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird.